Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. If it's your first time seeing me, go ahead and like this video because I know you're gonna like it already. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. And if you already are subscribed, hey babies, how you doing? What's good? Welcome back. So today guys, we're gonna be talking all things um, reprogramming our subconscious mind. Now, I have talked to you guys a few times before about reprogramming your subconscious mind. I'm always mentioning it, but I've never really gotten into it in depth like this in a video. So, of course, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm always asked to do a video about reprogramming your subconscious mind. And even though, again, like I said, I'm always touching on it, I've never really done a video in depth talking about it. So, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, when you are talking about your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind is kind of like a catch-all for everything that happens in your life. All of the trauma lives there, the pain lives there, the good experiences, the triggers are formed there. You know, everything that we've experienced that we haven't let go of, that we haven't healed, um, the things that happen in our life and we just try to make ourselves distracted to move forward on from those things or when we don't properly grieve a person or relationship something that we lose you know what i'm saying when we don't take the time to really heal ourselves and feel what we need to feel about the things we've experienced that, that can become attached to our subconscious mind and when we have all of these things connected to our subconscious mind it kind of is like it makes it a lot more difficult for us to love freely and forgive and release grudges and you know accept new situations and walk into our purpose because we're holding on to all these things from the past so freeing your subconscious mind is really going to free you in every sense and reprogramming your subconscious mind is the way to do that so your subconscious mind you can also think of it as a computer um, and from birth we are programmed to feel certain things so let's say for example in your household when you were coming up if you cried you got teased you got picked on you know what I'm saying everybody was taught to not show no weakness and never show no emotion so now as you're growing up your subconscious mind has been programmed to handle your feelings a certain way when you feel like you need to cry you might lash out in anger when you feel like you need to cry you might hurt yourself you might turn to drugs you might find whatever you can to get that release besides the natural health the release of crying or expressing yourself but your subconscious mind has been programmed that the natural form of expression is going to give you the outcome that you want you know what i'm saying programming is just the way that we learn things so throughout our life we have different experiences and we're taught different things we see different things in our friendships that help us handle situations differently like let's say for example if you were in a um, relationship and every time you spoke up in this relationship this person was abusive towards you they gaslit you they made you feel like they couldn't hear you so now in other relationships you've been programmed to hold in your emotions things like that or let's say for example in career if you had spaces in career you know what i'm saying where you've done one thing in a certain space and it gained you a lot of success and you keep doing that thing thinking that you're going to be getting successful your subconscious mind has programmed you that if you do this it's going to get you this outcome and you really like this outcome so we're going to keep doing more of this but also your subconscious mind can kind of run freely when you aren't being mindful of the things that you're tapping into the difference between your subconscious mind and your conscious mind is that you can control your conscious mind. You are fully aware of every thought that is passing through your conscious mind. You understand where it's coming from, why you feel that way. It makes sense to you. The things in your subconscious, your subconscious is really not available for all of us to tap into all of the time. Your subconscious is kind of in the background, you know, running the scenes, but really it's fully active and taking over the show when we're asleep. And also sometimes we can get in some really deep um, meditation where we're able to kind of filter through the things that happen in our subconscious mind. But I feel like healing on this journey is really about tapping into your subconscious all the time. You know, the things that we have to release, the things that we have to core cut, the things that we have to leave behind, realizing how these things affect us, where the triggers come from, and all of that is literally located in our subconscious mind. So we do spend a lot of time in that space already so for me i feel like reprogramming my subconscious really was helpful when i was dealing with a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety um i just was not feeling good i really felt like my life was going to be terrible for the foreseeable future um i really just couldn't see my way out of the current space that i was in and i knew that i needed to do something differently like i got to the point where i was like i cannot keep going on like this something has to change so what I started doing was listening to affirmations and um, sound bowls every night when I went to sleep. And it was very, very, very helpful for me. It was very healing for me. And I felt like throughout the day, you know, when I had idle thoughts or when I wasn't really thinking about too much, it wasn't instantly a thought of stress or inst instantly a thought of fear or instantly an intrusive thought that's going to, you know, lead me to harm myself or harm others. 
and intrusive thoughts are the thoughts that we always get, you know what I'm saying, when we're talking about anxiety. But I feel like everybody deals with intrusive thoughts, you know. Intrusive thoughts are the thoughts that tell you when you're on a highway to jump out the car, or the thoughts that tell you to stick your hand on a hot stove, or the part of your brain that tells you to do something that's really fucked up that you know you're not going to do. But those are intrusive thoughts. Those are thought. Those thoughts are pure anxiety. It's mindlessness. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't symbolize anything. It's just a thought that popped into your head. And if you have anxiety or if you have depression, you already kind of have a corner of your mind that's pretty dark anyway. So it can kind of spit those thoughts out, you know, every now and again. So reprogramming your subconscious mind can really help you handle those intrusive thoughts. And instead of having all of that space in your mind that's blank and your mind is filling it with, you know, anxiety and stuff like that, when you start to reprogram your subconscious mind, you're filling your brain with happy things and positive things and things that are going to, you know, help you move forward. It's it's kind of like if you are not putting positivity into your subconscious, you can't get positivity out. So if you aren't listening to sound bowls, if you aren't repeating affirmations, if you aren't telling yourself that you're beautiful, if you aren't motivating yourself, if you're not reminding yourself every single day of your power, of your goals, of how amazing you are, of how ambitious and driven you are, if you are not constantly in your corner, you know, boosting yourself up and just reminding yourself to be grateful and to be humble and just experience life to the fullest, it's going to be very, very easy for you to slip into negative thoughts automatically. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's kind of how we develop a pessimistic, you know, mindset when we aren't, you know, nurturing our subconscious mind because we're always going to experience failure. We're always going to experience being let down. We're always going to experience, you know, just not getting the things that we feel we deserve in a friendship, in a relationship, in, in a career. You know, we always could be doing better. So it's very easy for you to kind of manifest all of that into feelings of doubt and feelings of insecurity and feelings of never being satisfied with the things that you have here in your life and feelings of even more you know depression but whenever we've been practicing gratitude and practicing our affirmations and just you know practicing realizing that life is just life you know our subconscious mind starts to shift a little bit and support us a little bit more the space of your subconscious can either lift you up or you know tear you down so it's up to us to make sure that we are putting good positive things into that computer so it can actually respond to us in a more positive way you know what i'm saying i remember growing up in um in middle school and kind of in high school you know i really didn't feel pretty honestly i really didn't have that much self-esteem i really didn't feel like i looked good um i was funny so i thought that that was my claim to fame that i was funny but i really didn't think i was attractive um and it was you know very very difficult for me and it got to the point where i didn't even it was very difficult for me to start seeing myself you know as an attractive person because I've always just told myself that I wasn't and I always felt like I wasn't and I always was looked over and teased and picked on so I just always felt like I was ordinary or mediocre or not really anything to look at or not really anything to brag about and it wasn't until I started you know to reaffirm that no way look at myself like look at what I've done look at what I've accomplished look at, how, look at how far I've come you know what I'm saying whenever I started to kind of see those things and speak those things to myself I was able to change because let's say for example I've been telling myself that I am unattractive forever whenever I look in the mirror me being attractive is not even a thought that's popping up in my mind you know it doesn't matter who tells me I look good it doesn't matter what dress I try on it doesn't matter where I travel and what I give myself and how much I point to myself and self-love if I'm not feeling like I'm attractive and I've been telling myself that every single day one day of self-love is not going to be enough to change that you know I'm gonna have to start speaking positivity into myself like all of the things that we do to instill negativity into our subconscious mind, we have to do just as much positivity to switch that. You're still going to deal with anxiety. You're still going to deal with stress. You're still going to deal with intrusive thoughts. You're still going to deal with, you know, um, self-doubt and insecurity and things like that. But it's about, again, repetition. And it's about just kind of sticking to it and realizing this is a habit that I've picked up in the last 20 years. Like I've done this and thought this way for my entire life. I'm not going to be able to undo this thinking right now. And it's also your subconscious mind that tells you, you're not going to be able to do this anyway. You ain't going to be able to achieve it anyway. You ain't going to be able to finish it anyway. I feel like that's why so many of us fall off on our spiritual journey and we don't get back on. You know, it's your subconscious mind that's telling you, you should have never stopped doing it. Why you stop doing it? Why you going to start doing it again? You just going to stop again. You ain't got no discipline. You ain't got no motivation. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. It's like your subconscious mind is telling you that you cannot do something it's like, where is that coming from? You know, have you always had people in your life that have told you, if you don't get it right the first time, don't even worry about getting it right. Don't even worry about trying. Whenever you made mistakes in your life, have you nurtured yourself through those mistakes? Have you, you know, been kind to yourself and been loving to yourself and taking care, care of yourself? You know what I'm saying? In every space, if our subconscious is not nurturing us, it can definitely be hurting us. So 
take some time to think about how your mind supports you. You know, whenever you're about to go out for a new job or go on a first date or, you know, try something new in business or whatever the case may be, is your first reaction and your first reaction to yourself, what the fuck am I thinking? Who the fuck do I think I am? Why do I think I'm worthy of this? Why do I think I'm going to be able to make this happen? You know what I'm saying? Is your subconscious supporting who you are? Is your subconscious supporting the things that you want? And if it isn't, then it's time to turn that bad boy around. You know what I'm saying? And again, speaking to yourself, being positive to yourself is definitely going to be great. Also, sound bowls. Sound bowls are something that you guys know I've been using sound bowls in my videos forever. Um, and when I first stepped into this journey, sound bowls was something that I started doing before anything. I love sound bowls. I love a sound bath. It literally feels like a bath. It literally feels like it is cleansing you from the inside out. And we need things, we need frequencies that our brain can understand. Maybe we can't understand it. I don't know why these sound bowls relax me, but they do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just have to do things that makes our brain feel better, even if we can't physically see the point of listening to sound bowls all day, every day. Or making sure that, you know, before we go to bed, if we can't sleep, we play our sound bowls instead of just staying up on our phones, scrolling for hours, you know? We have to make sure that we are making an effort to include more things in our life that are making us feel good. So positive self-talk, definitely. If you are, like I said, whenever you're first trying to do something, if your knee-jerk reaction is to think negatively and say, I'm not even about to try them pants on, they're not going to look good. I'm not even about to go over here. I'm not going to have a good time. I'm not even about to go off of this. I know I'm not going to get it anyway. Stop thinking that. And unpack that and figure out when was the first time you started feeling like failure was all you had to offer, you know, because everybody fails. Everybody makes mistakes. If the way of the world was you fail once you're a failure for life, we would all be failures for fucking life. All of us. We all make mistakes. We all get knocked down. So whenever you're in those spaces, figure out, you know, how you respond to yourself. Think about how you respond to yourself. And also, if you're in spaces when you're successful, are you celebrating yourself or do you just feel like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. What's next? Or and you don't really think that anything that you're accomplishing is really a big deal. You know, you want to make sure that you're nurturing yourself in ways that everybody else can't you know everybody can congratulate you and tell you that you're doing a good job um but your subconscious mind is what's driving you to make every decision it's like even if people are telling you things if it's not in your brain if your mind isn't telling yourself that it doesn't even matter what people are telling you so you have to work on convincing your mind and you have to work on making sense with how you feel you know i have definitely felt in the past in relationships that you know, if I gave up on a relationship that I was being a quitter, that I wasn't giving it all I had, that no matter what people did, if they said they loved me and they said they wanted to get better, I need to give them a chance. You know, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, it got to the point where even if I was thinking of, you know, picking myself, I started feeling guilty. I started feeling selfish. Like this person needs me. Like, why am I even thinking about walking away from this person? Even though I'm miserable every day, this person needs me. Who else does this person have? Who else can they lean on? Who else can they depend on? But it wasn't until I found the root of that thought that I was able to release that. You know what I'm saying it's like I've always put a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of pressure on myself I've had a lot of pressure put on myself always you know what I'm saying it's not like my parents were really 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 strict um but I knew that they accepted one thing and that was they weren't accepting anything less than that you know so my parents really didn't have to do too much to get me to respect them and understand that the certain things that I need to do I need to do them so I really really take pride in everything that I do I'm a perfectionist I don't like walking away from situations feeling like I failed or feeling like I just didn't give everything I had especially if I love somebody but I had to get to the root of why I felt that way and why I was letting that you know mess up my adult relationships and mess up my adult life because even though that was something that was instilled in me to a certain extent that isn't the best way to show that quality in a way that's going to benefit me you know I can still have high expectations for myself I can still require more for myself in love but I have to do it in a way that's going to serve me you know what I'm saying? I can still critique myself and look in the mirror and say, okay, I need to do this with my hair different. I need to do this with this different outfit. I don't really like this. I need to change this. Like I can critique myself from a space of love. And from it's all about finding a way to do things that elevate you and lifts you up and just remind you of who you are. You know, I feel like also when we're reprogramming our subconscious mind, we have to figure out who we want to be. You know, we have to figure out what am I going after right now? What are my goals? What is the version of myself that I'm trying to emulate right now? What is the version of myself that I'm trying to tap into? Because if you know the type of person that you want to be, you can create your subconscious mind to support that person. You know, there was a time in my life, and I'm sure if you're watching this video and you need to reprogram your subconscious mind, there was a time in your life when those th dark thoughts really supported how you felt. You know, there was a time when 
my thoughts of, you know, insecurity and my thoughts of how not good I looked and my thoughts of just, you know, what I deserved when it really reflected how I felt in real life. You know, there was times when I really felt like I deserved the things that I was going through. There was times when I really felt like I wasn't ever going to find anything better or I wasn't ever going to amount to what I felt like I deserved. You know, so for me, in a certain time, in a certain place in my life, those that was a part of who I was. You know, that really was how I felt and what I really thought about myself. So now that I don't feel that way and I don't think those things, if I haven't done the work to kind of clear my mind out and make sure that my new mindset can support who I really feel I am, I'm going to still be tussling with that old part of myself. You know what I'm saying? So getting to the root of that stuff is definitely going to be key, especially when it comes to things about, you know, relationships. I feel like so many times we deal with, am I really worth this? Should I really leave? Am I going to find something better? I've wasted five years, 10 years, whatever. Am I ever going to be able to start over? You know, sometimes we just deal with thoughts that we pound into ourselves over and over and over again. And we also might have friends that might tell us, oh, y'all need to work it out. Y'all going to be cool. Y'all going to get back together. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know, we always don't get the support that we need in those spaces and if your brain can't support you then sometimes we'll look for support in our friendships we want validation from other people because we can't do it for ourselves you know what I'm saying I want to validate myself and my subconscious mind is just telling me all of these negative things you know so sometimes we can look for validation from other people you know and that might not even be good either so you really want to make sure that you are creating your brain in a space that's going to serve you you know I also feel like when we see a lot of things in relationships and we experience a lot of things you know as a third party you know our homegirl experiencing something and then she telling us about it you know your teammate got something going on and they come in and tell you about it just people in your life experiencing things and venting to you that can kind of shape your mind as well especially if you haven't shared those experiences you know if you're someone that's never started a business and you want want to start a business but everybody around you has started a business and they broke it's hard they're not able to get anything they're always sad all the time seeing that can make you feel like oh damn I don't want to start a business because you start to associate starting a business with the stress and the frustration that you see from everybody around you you know so a lot of times the people around us can be impacting our subconscious mind just as much as we are but it really is about our environment you know it really is about the things that we absorb and the things that we take off from everybody that we come in contact with a lot of it if not most of it really comes from our childhood it comes from how we lay down our foundation you know we all have a certain foundation of what is right in career what is right in friendship what is right in parenting what is right you know in um in romance what is right in intimacy like we all kind of have a code of what should be done and what shouldn't be done generally there's a code and also individually we all have things that we think are right and things that we think aren't and everybody's idea of that is different you know there's a lot of people that think stuff is right that we think people need to be in jail for. And it's a lot of people that think something is wrong. And that's literally what people live for. It's literally how they, you know, live their life and base their life. So everybody needs different things and everyone feels differently about the spaces that they're in. But we are all impacting and affecting each other. So a lot of times you end up with a subconscious mind that really can't even support who you are. And I feel like that's why a lot of us can be so out of touch with our intuition. We can be so out of touch with what we need and what we believe in because we don't even know who we are. And that really comes from spending time with you and having conversations with you. So in terms of friendship stuff, relationship stuff, always ask yourself, how does this make me feel? Does this support my greater good? Does this support my highest self? Does this support me being the best that I can be? You know, is my behavior in this situation a reflection of who I feel I can be in the future? If it's not, how can I make the situation work? You know, what do I need to input into my computer into my subconscious mind to see this situation in a way that's going to help me elevate and move past it. You know, sometimes, again, your subconscious mind can leave you stuck in certain spaces if you aren't able to do the work or if you aren't able to really think about things. And because when we're children, we really lack critical thinking. And sometimes as adults, we can lack critical thinking, some of us. But critical thinking is what allows you to make peace with the situation. It allows you to see a situation for what it is from every side, you know, no frills, no good, no bad, just this is what it is, you know, because in reality, there is never really any good or bad in the situation. Everything is in balance. You know, you cannot have one thing without the other. Everything is in balance in this life. And there's always things that we're picking up on from different people in different situations. But it's all about finding that middle ground of things that are going to support you. Um, so I really think connecting with your higher self can be good as well for reprogramming your subconscious mind and just getting to the nitty gritty of what you need. Like, what is the type of mindset that you need to support you? Do you need to be able to think on your toes? Do you need to be able to research very well? Do you need to be able to network? Do you need to be able to encourage? 
encourage yourself when there isn't anybody around you to encourage you? Do you need to be able to encourage others and lift up a team? You know, what do you need to do to become the best version of yourself? And make sure that you have a mindset that is supporting that. And if it isn't, figure out what's blocking up that mindset. Figure out what from your past, figure out what you're dealing with, what you're holding on to that's keeping you in that space. And whatever that is, release it. You know, there's so many things that we experience, so much embarrassment, so much letdown, so much disappointment that we experience in our life. We let all of these things kind of keep us bound and stop us from feeling these energies ever again. A lot of us are still trapped in some traumatic relationships because we haven't thought about the traumatic relationships in five years. You know, we put it in the back of our mind and we don't ever want to think about what happened to us, what was said. We don't ever want to think about what transpired. We just want to move forward. You really have to feel it to heal it. And pushing something down is not doing the work. Pushing something down and just moving on like nothing ever happened is not healing anything. It's like you are worth validation. You are worthy of expression. And even if you are expressing to yourself, that's who you need to express it to. You need to talk to you about what has happened to you. And I've had some shit happen to me, okay? So as someone who's experienced a lot of stuff, I can definitely say, the way I made peace with the things I've experienced is because I had to deal with them for myself. I had to really sit down and be like, okay, let me figure out what happened in the situation. Was I wrong? Was I right? Is there anything I could have done that got that could have, you know, got me out of that situation sooner? You know, I make peace with the red flags that I missed. I made peace with the fact that I, maybe I didn't take better care of myself or maybe I trusted somebody that I shouldn't have trusted. You know, I had to make peace with everything that I did that allowed me to be in spaces that I did not need to be in. And I had to accept the part that I played in those spaces. And that really freed me from that. And it freed me from the guilt. It freed me from the pressure. It freed me from the pain and from the reminders of the things that I've experienced. And made it allowed me to be able to kind of see these things as, wow, this is not something that victimized me and traumatized me and left me fucked up. This is just something that I've experienced. It hasn't changed, you know, the core of who I am. It hasn't made me bitter. It hasn't made me toxic. You know, I haven't let toxic people make me toxic. I haven't let fucked up people make me fucked up, you know. But the way that we do that is by transparency and realizing the things that we've experienced and dealing with the things once and for all. So again, cracking open your subconscious, figuring out where those synergies are coming from and getting to the root of them, doing a lot of journaling, a lot of meditation, um, listening to a lot of sound bowls, looking up, reprogramming your subconscious mind, doing the meditations, listening to the sound bowls. Even if you're not watching my videos, I could care less about that shit. We need to work on our subconscious minds. Like there's so many different places on YouTube that I've found that have been helpful for me listening to sound bowls with affirmations, eight hour long video where I listen to it all while I'm asleep and I wake up and I feel confident. I wake up and I feel like I can trust myself. I wake up and I feel like I'm aiming for success because that's what's been playing in my subconscious mind all night. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if you want to or not, and everybody always jokes about this. When you lay down in bed, you're thinking of everything you ever went through, all of the trauma, all the different ways you would have did stuff. That's literally what you think about when you lay down in bed. How about, how about, you put on some sound bowls. How about you put on some affirmations? And I'm typically a very light sleeper. I'm typically someone that cannot go to sleep with anything on. You know, I no TV, no music, no nothing. I literally don't like nothing. I don't like nothing on when I'm asleep. But my spirit allowed me to be in a space where I needed those sound bowls and that affirmations. I needed to listen to that frequency while I was asleep. And when I tell you slept like a baby, I would not wake up through the night. I literally would listen to the whole video. And when I wake up, the video will have like 30 minutes left. I'll sleep the whole night through the whole entire eight hour video, literally not waking up at all. So if you feel like your spirit needs this, do not be telling yourself, oh, I'm not gonna be able to listen to that while I'm asleep. Don't already start making excuses. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing about reprogramming your subconscious mind. You have to understand, like your subconscious mind is held on to a certain belief and a certain way of doing things. It is not gonna just release that overnight, like I said earlier. We're really going to have to work at it, but with repetition, we can make it happen. And also remember, we can take on subconscious stuff from our ancestors, from our past lives. Your subconscious is such a vast space and everything is affecting it at every time, all of the time. So yes, guys, I hope you guys like this video about reprogramming your subconscious mind. And I hope it made sense to you about exactly what your subconscious mind is and how we can change those energies of our subconscious mind and make it support us and lead us forward in a way that we need to be led forward. So yes, guys, I hope you love this video and I hope that it gave you what you needed. Um, and if you guys have any questions, of course, leave them down below. But again, make sure that you guys look on here, okay? Go on YouTube. I know you're already here because you're watching me. Look up in the um, search bar reprogramming your subconscious mind it's an eight hour video literally try it i've recommended it to so many of my clients i'm always talking about it on here and it works like people tell me my energy has been lighter i've been feeling better about myself it really 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 works and what i'm telling y'all i had horrific 
I was not doing well mentally, okay? I was not doing well. I was not taking care of myself. And I really needed my brain to start supporting me more because I could not find, a, I just, there was no hope. Like I literally felt hopeless. I felt absolutely hopeless. All I thought about all day was negativity, how I wasn't going to be this. I wasn't going to be this. I'm so stuck. I'm so stupid. I can't believe I let myself get into this space. Like I felt so much regret and so much sadness. And I was so, 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 so miserable. There's no way in fucking hell that I even would have been able to pray for myself or encourage myself or look in the mirror and be like, you're beautiful. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror because my skin was all fucked up. My, well, I wasn't getting my hair done. I literally was just wearing turbans. I wasn't even washing my hair underneath. Like I was not doing well. Like I was in a very, 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 very low space. And taking the time to one, dedicate myself to just listening to that shit every single night and making a point to get myself together and look good and start washing my face and making sure I'm doing my spiritual baths and spending time in nature and, you know, really making the best out of my situation, you know, and really making the best out of the very uncomfortable space that I was in. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wouldn't have started just with the sound bowls and just, you know, with um, something that my mind can do while I am not in it. It's very hard to work on your subconscious mind when you are awake because you have all of those conscious thoughts, you know, beating against your subconscious mind, which is also fighting. Um, but at night, you are relaxed, you are asleep, you are vulnerable. Listen to that stuff at night, seriously. It really, 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 really helps. Um, and I think that's the best way to get started because if you do that, it gives you a foundation. So when you wake up, you feel refreshed, you feel a little bit better. You might want to go for a walk. You might want to go for a run. I was getting up every day in Atlanta. Sometimes it was cold, sometimes it was raining. I was getting up every day and going and sitting outside for hours i would literally get up at like 7 a.m and be sitting outside on my back patio which literally was facing the forest i would literally sit out there all day until like two or three i would meditate i would journal i would watch youtube videos i would bring some snacks i would smoke i would just vibe and just appreciate life and appreciate the space that i was in I would have never been able to do that beforehand. I wasn't trying to even see or hear no shit like that beforehand. So starting somewhere and just giving yourself a push um, is really, really helpful. And it's also kind of the first little touch of self-love, just telling yourself, we can start somewhere. We can do this. It's going to be okay. I love you. I'm here for you. I'm with you, you know, and I really had to do that. I really had to wrap my arms around me. You know, I didn't have any friends, any family, no relationship. Um, And it was really, really difficult. It was a really hard space for me to be in, but that was when I learned to stand up for me and to love me and to really make sure that my mind was a space that could help me lead me forward. Do I still have bad days? Hell yeah. But I will stand by myself and I will never let myself get as low as I once did. Um, and I have tools now that can help me motivate myself and move forward. Um, so yeah, guys, that is a tea about um, your subconscious mind. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed me talking about a little bit of my tea. Um, I've definitely seen you guys comments about just kind of enjoying more stories about me in these videos. And a lot of it has a lot to do with me and a lot to do with things that I've learned. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate y'all as always. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye guys, bless.